Tom, we uh, talked to Kirby yesterday about Chris Rodriguez, Kentucky's running back. Uh, what sort of stands out to you about the way he runs with the ball and, and the challenge he's going to present this uh, Chris Rodriguez, he just runs the ball physical. Uh, down here, hard nose runner, seeks contact. So tackling him, you know, you're gonna have to really bring the feet, wrap up, gang tackle, swim. Jay Smile, after the Stanford game earlier this year, you said you get like jittery and nervous at times at that point. Uh, could you talk about how comfortable you are at this point in the season? Uh, say it again. Could you talk about like how comfortable you are at this point in the season? You said earlier in the year after the Stanford game that you got like jittery and nervous at times. Um, I think I was supposed to say I was like kind of too like hyped up, um, not necessarily jittery or nervous, but um, yeah. Now um, over the uh, past couple games, I kind of more so like play even kill, you know, more so not too hype, not too like low. Yes, Mal Kirby was saying that the defense gets excited about offenses like Kentucky's and more traditional offense, one that you know would be very close in the NFL one day. What's it like preparing for that challenge, and how excited are y'all to, to face a team like Kentucky? physical practices, you know, that's one of the things that um, we got to do to get ready for a team like this, just physical practices, but yeah, you know, we like when the team's going to uh, just try to run downhill at us, you know, we'll be able to, um, yeah, we'll just be able to play physical. Um, where do you think that you've grown the most this season? Where I've grown the most, I would say my confidence level on the field. More so, like, because at the beginning of the year, like, I ain't never started before. So now, like, I seen what I could do. I got confidence and then just try to build on that. Smile, in uh, two of the last three games, the defense hasn't been able to create any turnovers. How much is that talked about as far as going out there and trying to create turnovers? Our coaches stress that every day in practice, whether it's um, if you're a DB playing the ball better or just anybody tackling, trying to strip out the ball, punch out the ball. You know, we have drills on that. They talk about it every day in meetings and practice. That's something we've been emphasizing. Smile, so I wanted to ask, uh, you know, no one's been gone for a couple games now but out. Has that meant anything extra for you in terms of playing on the edge? I mean, are you doing anything differently for your position or is it just kind of the same as always? No, nah, it hasn't changed anything in my position. Yeah, Jalen Walker, he's played a little inside linebacker this year, repping now maybe a little bit of edge, the edge rushers as well. What allows him to sort of bounce back and forth between the two position groups and play both? I think his versatility uh, really helps him play between both those positions because he's fast, fast, can move around like an off-ball linebacker, but like he's like, he's a big guy too. He's strong, so he can really get on that edge, set a good edge. I wanted to ask about Pop. How well did you know him? Watching him play last year, even before that, we're like, this guy's pretty good. Yeah, Pop, me and Pop, I didn't know him before he uh, got to Georgia. And then it was whenever he got here, we started talking, and then throughout time, we got close. But the first time I really noticed him, probably like, I think it was one of his first seven on sevens during the summer when he got here. He caught a pick, and then I was just like, I don't know. I ain't never caught a pick in practice at that point. So when I seen him catch a pick as a freshman, I was just like, that's good. And then. From there on, I like I just kept seeing flashes of him. Caught a pick in a scrimmage. I think it was our first scrimmage, or first or second scrimmage during the um, uh, fall camp of our freshman year. So he did that, and then he's just been flashing since. And then now he's the player he is now. Uh, you were talking about playing. You know, obviously Kentucky is a, a physical and tough team. You know. The game you guys play, it's physical and tough pretty much every week. How much about this point in the season? It's late November, it's getting cold. Uh, what do you do to stay healthy? How hard is it to stay healthy? Are you dealing with aches and pains and twists most of the time? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people say it's the SEC, you know, nobody's ever going to be 100% after that first game. So as far as dealing with your body, you got to get in the ice tub more, uh, rest, sleep. People don't really like take that into account as much, but sleep's a big factor in that. Make sure you get in your hours of sleep, ice tub, getting treatment, getting like the, uh, being proactive with your injuries versus reactive, like, you know, treat shit. Oh, my bad. <laughs> treat, <laughs> gotcha. Sorry. treat stuff. Uh, treat stuff before it gets uh, worse to where it's not necessarily a lingering injury. Just forget I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Smile, uh, 
what have you seen going up against the Georgia offensive line throughout the year? I mean, the challenge that, you know, having to face them in practice has been on you. Um, it's challenging in practice, but it's like a, it's kind of rewarding to see it in a game. You know, I see a lot of plays where Trust, Sand, uh, a lot of those guys, Brodrick, like, will be pushing a pile. I've seen them running 20 yards downfield, pushing a pile. Just extra effort plays like that, like, it's rewarding because like, I see them in practice putting in that work. So to see it pay off in the game and then them get the national, like, attention from it, it's, it's really rewarding. So, what makes you guys defensively uh, very effective in the red zone? Um... Defensively effective in the red zone. Honestly, uh, I, I can't really put my finger on it. Um, as far as one thing, it's kind of more so everybody working together. I feel like we tighten up, bend on break whenever teams get in the red zone. You know, we really key in, lock in on the game plan to execute. Smile, was there a game this year or a moment where you were like, okay, now I feel comfortable, I'm here, I'm a starter? Uh, maybe just a play or a game where your confidence boosted. I can't really necessarily think of like one play where I was just like, all right, I'm here now. It's like, it's kind of been gradual. Like over each game is just building up little by little by little. And then I'm like, at this point I've seen what I could do. And then like now I'm not necessarily, because when I like, before I, uh, before I first played my first game or started my first game, I, I didn't want to be that guy to mess up or anything like that. I didn't want to let anybody down. But now I'm not, that's not really something that's on my mind. I'm more so just, trying to help the team out now versus not trying to let nobody down. So what stands out to you about Will Levis and the challenge he's going to present Saturday? Uh, he's an athletic quarterback. Um, got a cannon for an arm, you know, moves around well. So just anytime playing a quarterback like that, he's going to present more problems. He can extend plays. Just it's a lot of different things about him. He's a good quarterback. More questions? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Tom.